A few years ago, the headlines were full of the news of Chevrolet Bolt EVs seemingly spontaneously bursting into flames. Granted, only a handful of Chevrolet Bolt EVs actually did the on fuego thing, but it was enough to cause General Motors to issue several recalls for the car, which ultimately ended in there being a massive battery replacement program that not only cost General Motors a lot of money, but also GM's then battery partner, LG Energy Solutions. Since then, a large number of Chevrolet Bolt EVs made between 2017 and 2019 have had their battery packs replaced under warranty. But last week, we heard news that those owners of 2020 Chevrolet Bolt EVs through to 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EVs were no longer going to get their battery packs replaced as a matter of course. Let's dig in. In this video, I'm going to give you a brief recap of the problem that originally plagued those 2017 through 2022 Chevrolet Bolt EVs, explain what some of the initial remedial work suggested by Chevrolet and LG Energy Solutions was, then explain all about the battery replacement program, and by the way, what you can look for if you are buying a Bolt to check that it has had the battery replaced, and then I will get to what GM is now saying that 2020 through 2022 Bolt EV customers will have to go through. And you might not like this if you are a Bolt EV owner. But before I do all that, a bit of a disclaimer. I am filming this at Just Gone 4 on the Thursday afternoon before it's due to publish. That's because it's Juneteenth on Monday and none of us are working today. So we're filming this ahead of schedule. And if there have been changes in the story since us filming it and it going live, we'll be sure to leave them in the comments section so you can catch up on the latest. OK, let's get started. So a couple of years ago, as I noted in the introduction, some Chevrolet Bolt EVs were catching fire. And the root cause of that was traced back to the battery pack and a manufacturing defect within the battery pack that was causing a mechanical short, which then of course caused the battery pack to go into thermal runaway and catch fire. That defect was caused by a problem on the manufacturing line for individual battery cells. And when GM and LG Energy Solutions discovered it, they eventually identified a workaround to make sure that future battery packs weren't subjected to the same problem and eventually agreed on a battery replacement for all affected 2017 through 2020 cars. However, that's not how it originally started. Originally, GM, just like Hyundai with the Kona EV, proposed a software solution that would look at the battery pack and identify any anomalies within the battery pack and then signal to Chevrolet, hey, there's a problem, this battery pack needs to be replaced. It turned out that the software updates didn't do what everyone said they would do. And after a couple of attempts and some software updates that restricted the capacity of affected Bolt EV battery packs to 80% of their total capacity, GM said, OK, we're going to do a recall campaign. It worked with LG Energy Solutions. It stopped production of the Bolt EV. It worked on the replacement battery pack and all 2017 through 2020 Bolt EVs that originally shipped with a 60 kilowatt hour nominal battery pack ended up getting an upgraded 66 kilowatt hour battery pack. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've owned not one, but two Chevrolet Bolt EVs. My original Bolt EV, we sold and replaced it with our Ford F-150 Lightning. But this car here is my partner's Bolt EV. It's a premier trim one, and it had its battery pack replaced last year. If you are on the market for a used Bolt EV and you want to check to see if the car has had the battery pack replaced under warranty, any Chevrolet dealer should be able to tell you. But a really quick way of looking is to look somewhere on the windscreen where there should be 
a sticker like we've got here that says Chevrolet battery certified replacement or words to that effect. If you don't have the sticker, then you may have to do some further digging before you commit to buying the vehicle. And while the majority of Chevrolet Bolt EVs in the wild now that were made between 2017 and 2020 have had their battery packs replaced under warranty free of charge, I understand that there are still some cars on the road that haven't had their battery packs replaced. Those vehicles will be restricted to between about 10% and 80% of their usable capacity and they won't get to access that final 20% at the top of the battery pack until they've had the battery replacement. So they will demonstrate reduced range, they may charge slightly slower too. Now, after the multiple attempts to issue software updates to try and fix the problem without issuing an actual battery replacement, Chevrolet reneged and said, okay, we're going to replace all affected battery packs. And owners of 2020 through 2022 Bolt EV and Bolt EUVs were kind of led to believe or inferred that they would be included in this recall campaign. GM prioritized the cars it deemed at risk first for battery replacements. So that was 2019 model year Bolt EVs and then it went back to 2017 and just basically worked through the entire fleet, replacing battery packs free of charge. 2020 through 2022 Bolt EV customers were deemed to have the lowest risk of anything going wrong, although it was suspected that some of those vehicles may still have had the manufacturing defect that led to the original problem. And so I'm going to assume that a battery replacement was the logical step. However, last week, GM reached out to owners of 2020 through 2022 Bolt EVs and said, you're not automatically getting a battery replacement. Instead, we've devised, you've guessed it, some special software that we will install in your car to monitor the battery pack. However, this time, the software is very different. Let's go over how it's different. In the past, the software restricted the maximum state of charge of Chevrolet Bolt EV battery packs to 80%. You couldn't past, go past even, you couldn't charge beyond that 80% state of charge. The new software update will restrict those cars temporarily for about 6,200 miles of driving, about 10,000 kilometers, and during that period of time, the software will monitor the battery packs carefully for any variances in cell voltage or current draw that might indicate there is a physical mechanical defect within the battery pack that could ultimately lead to the aforementioned short circuit. This is what I understand having talked to my contacts at GM. And then if your car has no issues, over that 6,200 mile or 10,000 kilometer bit of driving, the software will automatically de-restrict your battery pack capacity and give you back your full 100% state of charge. And I'm going to throw in here because I know someone in the comment section will say something, you're not actually gaining full 100% access to your battery pack, you're gaining the 0 to 100% access to the battery pack that your car originally had at the point of manufacture. Because battery packs can't go all the way down to zero without damaging themselves or go all the way up to 100 without damaging themselves, this is your theoretical maximum as opposed to the actual battery capacity if you were to completely drain it and then fill it back up. Anyway, this software will be applied to your car and you can book your car in from June 13th, so you can book them in already. It will be reprogrammed by your dealership. You will have a restricted range for the next 6,200 miles or 10,000 kilometers. And then assuming everything is okay, your car will be back to normal. For what it's worth, as a Bolt EV owner, if I had had this happen to my 2020 through 2022 Bolt EV, 
I would be very nonplussed right now because I'd be back to having a range restricted model. I would be back to having restrictions on my charging. And honestly, who wants to drive around a car with the fear that something might go wrong? I think GM has probably, and I'm pointing out here that this is my speculation. This is not reporting. This is my personal opinion. I suspect that the the partnership between LG and GM has gone south pretty quickly. I've heard rumors on the grapevine and I suspect that that neither company really wants to work together anymore and that this software update might be a way to ensure that they can clear up the remaining vehicles a little bit quicker. Bear in mind that between 2020 and 2022, there were some Bolt EVs made, but some of that period was taken up by a stop in production because of the battery recall. So I'm not sure exactly how many vehicles are affected by this. I'm sorry I haven't looked that up, but it is a lower number of the population as compared to the entire Bolt EV population as a whole. If I were you though, I would want to be talking to General Motors or Chevrolet's EV concierge service. They have a special number that you can call if you are a Bolt EV customer and it's worth exploring your possibilities. Remember, at the end of the day, you purchased a car and if it's not doing what it was designed to do, some states and some jurisdictions have regulations that can protect you as a customer. However, I also want to point out that since we've had the battery pack replaced in this car, it's felt like it's got a new lease of life. The new battery pack has been rock solid and reliable. We get more range in it than we used to under the old battery pack. That's obviously because it was an upgrade. If you've got a 2020 through 2022, you don't get an increase in capacity because your car came from the factory with that larger battery pack. I'd love to know if you have a Chevrolet Bolt EV, tell me in the comments section below. You can also reach out to us on Discord, on Mastodon, or if you are a Patreon supporter in the chat room there. That is it for today's video. If you want more, subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links below to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links to our Kofi, Bitcoin and Swag Store, as well as that aforementioned Mastodon server. And if you do subscribe, keep your eyes out for another update on this very car. And this little thing here, the Comma AI install is going to be the next video, hopefully next week, that drops showing this car driving some of the time. I wouldn't say driving itself because it's only a level two system, but certainly it's got more semi-autonomous capabilities than it had out of the factory. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters and shout outs go out to our V2G patron supporters, Pedro Mora Pinheiro, Alan Tapa, Andrew Martin, Bennett Elder, Brophy Wolf, Chris Maxwell, Cyprian Laplace, Dan Blair, Gordon C, Hey Esker, John Tramal, Kyle Fox, Mark Eggleton, Peter Dillinger, Stephen Williams, Tazlet in the Gong, Stephen Frenjen, Paul Bricknell, Tony Moss, Kyle Hodgson, Chris Asentar, Denny Hyde, Lance Lyle, Linda Irish, Mike Guida and Paul Nelson. And finally, big thanks to our off-grid supporters. They are Paul Conway, Kevin Burrowbridge, Stephen O'Donoghue, Jim Burness, Robert Flannery, Aaron Hahn, Ellery Hansley, Rory Litwin, JP Fagerback, Dave Kitchen, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, Chris and Michael Johnson, Clay Witt, CPU Freak 101, Eric Neck, Joe Bresney, Joe Hughes, John Henderson, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Nigel S, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and of course, Ian. Don't forget that we make content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, a day earlier if you are a Patreon supporter or YouTube channel member. And you can see us on Transport Evolve Take Two every Sunday, again, Saturday, if you are one of those aforementioned Patreon or YouTube member supporters for our Chicken and Garden update and Sunday Musing. And we've got some great stuff coming this coming weekend. In fact, I'll be telling you all about my new greenhouse. Thanks for joining me. And until next time, keep evolving. Mm -hmm.